Everybody, Sattler here at Robo T Rumble checking in. World Champions 4096. Control Z, a phenomenal season, by the way. Won an Impact Award at uh, Iowa, also won the Central Illinois Regional. Of course, Hopper Division Champion as well. This team played four matches uh, on into Einstein, including both finals as well, too. Control Z, really great package and a pride of Illinois. Take a look at what they have to offer. Of course, we'll be doing a full robot overview, talking about some cool iterations we've been doing. Let's learn more about World Champion Control Z coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Aiden, let's start kind of from the ground up here talking about your swerve drive. I you're using the uh, X-Swerve, but you've done a couple modifications. Tell me more about it. Yeah, so our team utilizes the Swerve X to get in and out of the lanes, of the tight lanes that the uh, field this year uh, has. So. We have a, Swerve, a WCP Swerve X modules, with, which are inverted, so they're very bottom heavy and facing towards our center to make it easier for us to balance. Looking at your Swerve, has your team done Swerve Drive in the past before? Yes, last year we used a Swerve, uh, Swerve X module. We really like the WCP pro CP products, sorry, and uh, yeah, it makes, us, makes it really easy because you can do both do defense, offense, balancing is very easy. So. You said you like uh, WCP a lot uh, for products. Why has it been such a good fit for your team? It's very reliable. It's very, it's very steadfast. We know we haven't had many problems with it. The only problem we've ever had was our belt just getting a bit of tread through it, but uh, getting a bit worn out. But other than that, yeah, WC products have been really reliable in the past, and we like using them. We're going to use them in the future. Yeah, awesome. Glad to hear it. I'm sure RC will be glad to hear that as well, too. Uh, Lisa, let's talk about your arm on your robot here. I think a big showpiece of it has been your consistency that you've had throughout matches. So talking about the composition of it, of course, we'll show off a little bit about it, too. Yeah, of course. Um, so our arm is composed of two sections. It makes up a telescoping arm and we use something called a racket pinion system which use little holes and with uh, gear to have our arm extend and then it's gonna it's supported by two triangle bases and, or, and it's like a really robust system so everything is um, very low and centered to gravity and everything is bottom heavy so and because we're swinging our arm around um, we would like to make sure that we're not gonna be tipping at all and even if we do tip we are able to get back up so when you were designing this uh, arm on your robot and approaching the charge up game, was that center of gravity a big focus on why your arm is mounted so low on your robot? Yes, so that's something that we talked about during our design session at the beginning of the season. We talked about, okay, we want this to be a very simple but very bottom heavy robot because we knew that this year's game is going to be very like a tippy game, especially because of like all the arms swinging around and stuff like that. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about your intake in a little bit, but let's show off the arm in action. Talk to me about uh, some of the different positions uh, and where you're scoring on the nodes with it. Yeah, of course. Um, so we're going to be showing off our arm at the different levels. Um, we can first go into our very high positioning. So if you want to go into high. This is going to be our high position. We use that just for our high scoring. And then we have our mid. And then we're going to use that for scoring mid. And then we also have our feeder station. And then go back to A. And then we use this for like just every level, and then we can also go into another one for low scoring. And then we go back into A. These are all set positions that we've done in code, and it's not, it's not manual at all, because we want to make this like the most simplest robot that we can do. Sure. So everything is, gonna, is already coded. We can tweak it if, if anything is too low or too high. Too. On your uh, arm itself, you know, I, when I watched it in action, you can see the robot kind of tipping a little bit, but we're also on a robot cart, right? So it's a bit different. Uh, on the field, uh, have you been pretty consistent in regards to not tipping over and that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, at one of our previous competitions, we do we did tip over, but because of how our arm is built, we are able to tip ourselves back up. Um, but other than that, we're not that tippy of a robot. We, something else that we also have, are we have a steel bar in our robot that's 13 pounds, and then we use that for more weight on the bottom. Uh, one of the things we were talking about before we started this interview is that you added on a uh, ground intake for yes. cubes as well to score in the level one nodes. Uh, talk to me about uh, how that intake is put together. Um, so we, 
our ro our whole robot. Um, this is the, like a mechanical intake because we don't want and we don't we didn't want to put any um, type of pneumatics on our robot. So it's used. It's run by a red line, and then it will go down, pick up cubes, and then come back up. There's a sensor on it, so it um, knows when a cube's in it, so it won't like go through right here. Um, and then we added this after all of our um, on-season competitions, so we were prepared to do something really cool at off-season. So this was not on the World Championship robot no. at the time, right? Um, looking at for your off-season strategy-wise, is this a only during teleop? Have you utilized this during auto or anything like that too? No, this is only for teleop when we want to score really quick cycles for low, and then we've done it in some of our competitions, and it's been really reliable for us. Awesome to hear with that. Let's start to wrap up on your robot, pass it back to Aiden, talk about your uh, intake here. I'm really curious about the wheel configuration uh, that you're doing as well, so talk to me more about it. Yeah, so we'll start with the intake. So the name of the game for the, us this year was being simple. We want to get our drive team as much practice as possible in in shop, in our shop before our season competitions. So our intake features, let's say, uh, eight wheels, right, with the current sensor to make sure that to let our swerve and our robot know that a cone or a cube is inside the robot when it's logged. And so the wheel configuration, this is, so the big wheel would be for the cubes, so I mean the cone, sorry. So when the cone comes in here, we would pinch it through this side, which would keep it really secure. And then, because the problem with uh, having another green wheel here was that the gap would be a bit too big. So, and then with our cube, again, since it's a bit fatter and it wouldn't pinch in through here, we would just place it on top, and then the current sensor would just let us know. That we At have what a, point did you figure that out? Like, did this change over the course of the season, or is this what you brought to your first event? Yeah, so uh, we, were, we knew we wanted a V design because that would work for both cones and cubes, but I think we, I know we uh, brought this wheel in later when we figured out that it wouldn't work as co as confidently as we wanted it to during big competitions. Well, Control-Z, congratulations on a phenomenal season. World Champions, I'm sure that feels incredible. Uh, going into uh, next year as well, too, at Crescendo, we wish you best of luck, and of course, we'll see you at the World Championship for that, too, but thanks for telling us more about your charge at Robot. Good luck here at uh, Robot 2 Rumble, and thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.